grandfather was just super supportive from my grandmother, my dad, my uncle. They would go on trips every so often. They would go up to the Catskills. I still remember the story that my grandfather told me about uh, entrepreneurship in the Catskills. So he set up this uh, jewelry stand at all the great hotels in the Catskills, all the Jewish hotels back then. It was uh, the Raleigh and Kutcher's and numerous others back in the day. Unfortunately, a lot of them closed, but he would set up, he would bring his uh, Osmobile. I remember, I still remember that car. It was a navy blue Osmobile. Back then, they made the trunks very, very big. It's not like it today where they're tiny, but I still remember his trunk being tremendous. And in the trunk was all this jewelry piled up so high of everything from earrings to necklaces to rings. He told me that rings sold the best. He said that he had a really great container for rings and he would put it right on the table and those were always the first things to go. And I didn't know, I didn't realize that rings were just so popular. You know, guys and girls, you know, uh, just regular silver rings or gold rings or just a cool design. He says, uh, Rich, if you ever want to sell jewelry, always make sure that you uh, put out rings because that's oftentimes the first things to sell. My dad taught me about jewelry from his father because my grandfather sold jewelry, you know, pretty much as a full-time job after you retired from the New York City Police Force. He said, Rich, you know, how about you start out, you know, uh, learning a little bit about, you know, the, the costume jewelry business and come out with me on these entrepreneur days that he had for his classes and learn about buying and selling because that's really the start, right, of, you know, salesmanship, right? Buying the product the cost of the goods sold, how much it's going to cost to buy the particular product that you're selling. That all comes first because then you want to know how much you're going to charge your customer. You're not going to charge the customer lower than what you bought it for, right? So that was just truly important. So I went out with my dad and then my grandfather would come with us along uh, on these buying trips with the students. And I would learn also along the way. So we'd go into these uh, areas of 33rd Street in, uh, in Manhattan. And I think it was from 33rd to like 28th Street in Manhattan, and that was like the Garden District, which still is uh, in existence today. And there are in, in the backs of these uh, areas of 33rd Church Street, there's a lot of these like uh, rooms and, and offices. And you go in, in the back of these buildings, there are tons of different types of jewelry in there by the dozen. So you go in there and you say, okay, I love that particular uh, ring. Well, let's get, you know, a, a dozen of those different colors. Let's get a bunch of those different colors of those uh, necklaces and uh, bracelets. And it was just so cool being there. It was just so awesome. It was just like this, you know, almost like a little creepy, not really like that alley kind of thing. But it was just like, I just noticed the, the floors were like broken up. And then you see on the wall all this beautiful wrap costume jewelry. And I said, wow, like, look at the contrast. So like going in there, you know, and uh, buying this great stuff. But it was kind of like, you know, I, I felt like a little bit nervous going in there because I didn't know. Was there someone coming in from the back? It was just like an interesting experience going in there. Uh, but I did make it out a lot. <laughs>